Now, Nigeria is the fourth largest producer of cocoa in the world, behind Ivory Coast, Ghana, Ecuador. But statistics show 85% of chocolates are imported into Nigeria. In a bid to benefit from this multi-billion dollar industry, my next guest is Uzo Igweike, who is the founder and CEO of a Nigerian chocolate company, crafted in the capital Abuja and sourced around the country, including in Oshun, Ondo, and Cross River states. Loomcraft chocolate is a testament to the entrepreneurial drive of Nigerian citizens. But in a country such as Nigeria, how lucrative are small scale and homegrown businesses like this? And how can Nigerian companies get a bigger share in this billion dollar industry? Well, I'm glad to say that uh, the CEO of Loomcraft Chocolate, Igweke, is here with me. So good to have you. I mean, reading about this and how fantastic you're doing. It gives us an opportunity to actually see how we can do homemade stuff that will actually compete with others. What's that unique selling point of your 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 company that's making the chocolate industry look different? Okay, first of all, I would thank you thank you very much for having me here. And the most important unique selling point is that we are local, we are sustainable, and we are innovative. So we are focused on using Nigerian grown cocoa and other Nigerian grown produce as well in making chocolate. So we're changing the narrative of exporting raw materials and we're focusing on exporting finished goods that value has been added to. Yeah, let's talk about you, I mean, having Nigerians, uh, uh, you know, buy into these chocolates. Sometimes you see products being manufactured in Nigeria here, but you see names on the labels bearing uh, made in China and all of that. Meanwhile, they are produced here. When people buy your products and they see made in Nigeria, how do they feel? Is the patronage actually increasing? Oh, it's been wonderful so far. I mean, the fact that we're here two years down the line, almost two years down the line, is a testament to how well we've been received by the public. So our products are out there in stores and, you know, we actually get um, feedback in terms of mail, text messages saying this is wonderful. They can't believe that this is actually produced in Nigeria. So that keeps us going. And you know, through the challenges, we, we work strong because of the feedback we, we get from our consumers. Yeah, I mean, and r having read so much about what you do, I heard that you have several flavors, including strawberry flavors, kuli kuli flavor, and yeah. all of that. I mean, tell us uh, a little more about that. So like I said earlier, our focus is basically spotlighting Nigerian produce. So I, we focus on those things like Kuli Kuli, even the strawberry, right, is actually strawberry grown in Joss and freeze dried in Lagos by another SME. So what we're doing is not just um, focusing on Nigerian produce, we're also supporting other local businesses as well. So we have flavors that feature cashew, ginger and sesame, which are like produce that Nigerians export, basically. So we, we are trying to put the, fo um, the spotlight on them and say we can actually produce like world-class products using locally made produce. Yeah, and uh, as we head towards Valentine, this is the period when chocolates actually <laughs> sell very well. Yeah. So I don't know how you um, are, are making use of such opportunities to actually promote this product. And um, how about exporting it outside Nigeria? Have you tried ECOWAS for a start uh, uh, to, to actually sell your products beyond the, our borders? Okay, so for Valentine's, we partner with gifting companies and people that actually um, promote and sell um, curated gift. So we you see our bars featured in a lot of um, 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 boxes, gift boxes that are sold during Valentine's. For exports, we received tremendous amount of support from the NEPC. In fact, we're beneficiaries of their last grant and you know, they've helped us shore up our capacity, they've helped us buy um, commercial grade equipment, shore up our raw material stores and you know, they are also linking us to markets outside of Nigeria. Yeah, and then talking about chocolates, why should more Nigerians actually eat chocolate? What, what are the health benefits? Because you have some people who also be afraid saying that uh, it could actually lead to health challenges here and there. What are the benefits of eating chocolates? Okay, m many people are scared of eating chocolate because what you receive from imported products is actually filled with a lot of sugar. But we are changing all of that. You know, we focus on the cocoa, and the health benefits of cocoa are really tremendo tremendous. So it it has heart benefit benefits. It improves your general mood. So taking cocoa, or even if it's a piece of chocolate, is very good for your health. And uh, how has it been sourcing raw materials within the country? Sometimes you hear that our cocoa grid here has some certain challenges and all of that, uh, especially when Europe is ordering from here. How have you been able to get good quality? cocoa that will be able to transform into you know 
very good chocolate that will be acceptable globally? Oh, well, I think that it's a, let me say, a foreign narrative that our cocoa is not good. I think our cocoa is excellent. It all depends on um, how you taste it. Like most foreign cocoa, you see they talk about notes of strawberry, notes of cherry. But, you know, we understand our own notes. We have notes of ground nuts, notes of palm oil notes that are related to our own cuisine. So the responsibility is actually on us to push our own narrative, to change the current narrative. I don't have problems getting good cocoa in Nigeria. So and, and let's talk about how the CBN is helping other businesses to, to uh, um, ramp up their production. And yesterday the CBN governor was actually on saying that we need more forex and the only way we can do that is if we export so what sort of um, support would you be getting to actually increase your exports and then maybe get more partners that will help you sell globally most like most small businesses we need a lot of support especially in terms of funding but not just funding right we need support in terms of policies that promote nigerian made produce supports that link us to markets outside because if we reverse the trend of importing um, foreign made chocolate that enough is a, is a win that in itself is a win yeah because you go to several supermarkets all you see it's foreign, foreign. chocolates here exactly. and there and all of that have you approached the nigeria export promotion council to actually see how you could benefit from some of their programs yes i've actually benefited from some of their programs i've benefited from a grant from them from trainings and even non-mandatory certifications that um, certify you on food safety. We are also part of those programs. So the NPC has been the one agency that has been really, really helpful for our oh. own business. Uh, and then, um, uh, like, uh, let me go back to that issue of Valentine. You know, co <laughs> uh, the, the issue of um, uh, seasonal periods like this is when um, you get lots of people giving gifts out and so on. And then chocolate has always been one gift that's usually given at a different point in time. How do you think that Nigerians can also embrace that culture, you know, putting just that, those bars of chocolates inside a gift box and give to others so that, I mean, companies like yours would uh, profit more? Well, I, I think the support has been wonderful for us because at the moment we are actually trying to increase our capacity. The seasons don't matter to us because right now we sell everything that we produce. So we, we feel like we, we have not even scratched the surface in terms of covering the markets in Nigeria. So we don't have a problem. Nigerians love chocolate. I mean, according to Euromonitor, last year we consumed about 31.1% million dollars worth of chocolate so we eat a lot of chocolate in interesting uh, so what was what's the idea behind it what inspired you to go into chocolate did you do lots of research to find out that there isn't so much of nigerian chocolate and that's why you had to get into it or oh, it's more profitable or there's just something that's there that w the rest of us are not seeing <laughs> okay well, it all started with a need you know i was working as as a tech consultant but i was speaking on the side and like with all nigerians we always have some side business we're doing mine was speaking and i found out that it was difficult to get really good quality chocolate but it didn't make sense to me because you know we grow cocoa in in, in nigeria the fourth largest producers of cocoa so i just typed in on google how to make chocolate at home yes through a lot of articles and i studied and read and researched and i was lucky that at that point when i was in that research the tony Ilumelu foundation was also requesting for um applications from entrepreneurs so i pitched the idea and the rest is history. Oh, interesting. So yes. you're actually one of the beneficiaries. Yes, yes. Okay, that's very good. Then let's talk about um, cocoa itself. I mean, lots of communities in the South grow it, uh, but we've been seeing uh, a lot of uh, challenges with actually growing because of uh, the need to have several varieties. Do you think that the agricultural ministry and all of that need to do more so that we can get better grade of cocoa? What do farmers within that value chain need to do more or how should they be supported to provide the best cocoa for you? Um, I think, first of all, that our, our problem is not necessarily in growing more cocoa. Where we should be focused on is processing the ones that we're already growing. But in terms of you know, how we can benefit the farmers, it's mostly training because there are processes that they actually carry out that help determine the flavor of the final chocolate product. So those processes, including fermentation and drying, they need training there. That, those are the things that, you know, will um, affect the flavor and if they are not done properly then you won't get good chocolate so that's the main place training farmers on how to ferment properly and how to dry so that they get the best value from the cocoa that they are already growing all right Uzo. 
Igwe Ike, uh, we must thank you so much. You're the founder and CEO of Loam Craft Chocolate. And for you to be here, I mean, living your tech industry, it means it's very lucrative. We can only wish you the best uh, in this um, industry. And that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambo.